Varsity Club, welcome back to another classic. <laughs> this week we're facing a tough Illinois team who's five and four. I, I get it, but they're tough. You might be saying, well, GGB, how are they gonna be tough? You are better than them in every category. Lee Corso's picking you to win, but let me tell you why. If you remember our schedule, we have, yes, two losses, one of them being way worse than the other one, where Purdue put up 59 points against us. And if you check Illinois' schedule, well, they literally just played Purdue and beat them 28 to 16. This is gonna be a tough game. And to make things even more dire and important, we have three prospects visiting this week in what could be one of the toughest games we've had in a while. Those prospects are gonna be Mr. Matthew Fowler, James Mitchell, and Anthony Minor. Let's look at him real quick. So Matthew Fowler is a four-star athlete, 78 overall, 6'4", 190 at Warren, Michigan. If we look at his stats, plus seven overall for, so we found a gem here, 90 speed, 89 acceleration, 90 pursuit, 87 man coverage, 87 zone coverage, 75 press, catching the 79, the route running and stuff is pretty good. This dude, he's 93 carrying. This dude honestly could probably play a little bit of halfback, a little bit of corner, a little bit of safety. We'll figure out, but I like what I'm seeing. We also have James Mitchell vi visiting us this week, who's a three-star uh, athlete as well. 70 overall, so not maybe as important in the grand scheme of things, but plus six overall, so a gem. Good speed, acceleration, jumping's pretty high. He doesn't really stand out in one particular category outside of that, maybe a little bit more raw. He's probably gonna be a corner again with what his zone and man coverage ends up being, but again, a guy that our team desperately still needs, but maybe a red shirt first year. And last, but certainly not least, is gonna be Mr. Anthony Minor, a tight end that we desperately need, a three-star tight end at that point. Good speed and acceleration, catching's really high, spectacular catch is good, route running is great. Run block could honestly be a little bit better, but everything he has in there for break tackle, trucking, spin moves, stiff arm, juke moves in 83, Elusis is in 83. This guy has a lot of different tools. He's another gem. We have three gems visiting this week against a really tough opponent. We need this W. From a top 25 perspective, despite winning against a top ranked team, we'll see where we ultimately are, but Michigan, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Miami, and Alabama have not moved at all. They are staying fast one through five where they are. If you go down and find us, we are at 21, which is the same spot we were last week. And again, we beat a top 25 team and we didn't move. What the heck is happening here? We have no one in the Heisman race to this point. Obviously we've had a lot of injuries to McConnell, which is kind of stunning what he could potentially be doing this year, but still he's thrown for 2,032 yards, 22 touchdowns and seven interceptions. You want to keep that in single digits if at all possible. On the ground, Durbin has almost 700 yards, 10 touchdowns. McConnell a little over 500 with six. You see Barr chiming in with 222 and three touchdowns and limited carries. I'm really happy with what these guys are doing. Even McFadden, again, that 65-yard rush he had earlier this year. Dude's a weapon. In the air, Robert Roth getting an IRA looking nice. 28 receptions for 501 yards and two touchdowns. Durbin's got one touchdown and 26 grabs. McFadden second in the team in yards and uh, 491 with six touchdowns. Dawk is having, a, again, another underrated season. Always undervalued, always underappreciated, but we love that dude here. Uh, Gold's got five, Barr's got two, Rubley has one, and Trey Swain on seven grabs has four touchdowns. We'll find a way to get this guy a little bit more playing time next year when some more spots open up, but he's a stud. To no one's surprise, Tommy Eichenberg is leading us in tackles with 51 of the year, 12 of those being for loss, two sacks as well. Jacoby Walters doing well, Conley, Ray Walton, Bastion Kirk, Damon even with 33 grabs as well. Uh, from a sack perspective, we have four from Mullins, two from Caps, Edwards, and Eichenberg, as well as Walters and Cole. And we have one each from Quan Anthony, Mario Moses, and Garner Conley. Interceptors, we know who's leading that. Mr. Damon here with five of his own. John Hall's got four. We got two from Kirk and then one from Walton, Cole, Houston, and Conley. Again, I wish we had a little bit more in the sack area and maybe the interception area, but the defense is doing their job, but there needs to be some work done as well. This is a massively important game with all these three prospects coming in again. We are trying to build the best possible team that we absolutely can. And to do that, we're going to need to get these prospects here and catch the balls, Derwin. What are we doing? A little second out after a drop pass there from Derwin. McConnell's going to keep it, but they know we like to run the read option and they're keying in on it. Illinois team is going to be absolutely tough. We've got to be prepared for a lot of pressure coming today. A close one. We fire into a tight window. Romello Dawkins holds on to it for 19. First and 10 again for McConnell, the company. Going here to the read option. They don't seem to key in on it as much. And McConnell's going to slide because, again, we're trying to make sure he doesn't take many hits, if at all, today. Yes, McConnell has had issues with interceptions here and there or some turnovers here and there. But the biggest problem we've had is keeping this dude upright on the field. If we could just protect him a little bit more, we're golden. Now we've got someone out here. This Jason Barr going deep. And Barr's going to hold that one in. 49 yards to the house. Jason Barr with the biggest play to open the game. The young fella is here.
a lot about trying to find the Heisman candidate for our team, who that might be. We've been thinking it might be John McConnell, but honestly, it might be Jason Barr down the road at some point if McConnell never gets any hype. What a major hit there by Eichenberg, making sure the Illinois knows we're coming to play right now. They go back with a little play action. We bit pretty hard on it. He's got a couple options. He's going to try to run. We got our guys there. Hall gets run over, but Conley with a huge hit. Isaiah Williams for Illinois is a really, really good quarterback. Super underrated. He's a great thrower. He's a great runner as well. We got to keep out for that guy, but what a stop by our defense in the first drive to make it fourth and two for a punt. Crazy start to this game. Derwin drops that opening pass. Gets me a little bit nervous, and then we see the young fella Jason Barr come through at the end after Dawkins has a big 19-yard grab to pick up major yards. And Derwin says, oh, don't sleep on me. I'm going to pick up nine here. Seeing our guys come out here and just put on the show is just, it feels so great. Considering all the issues we've had this season, Watching you guys just dominate like they are right now and picking their poison is amazing. Now, we do want to be a little bit pass happy if we can get a lead here because we need 250 passing yards. We need 100 uh, receiving yards by a tight end today. So that's obviously going to be important. Dropping back a little bit. He's got his guy open. He's going to hit Dawkins again. Dawkins is moving. You know, Dawkins in the open field is an absolute monster. And he picks up 26 more yards there. Now, speaking of tight ends and getting receiving yards, I think Jared Gold is probably our option here rather than seeing uh robert roth we'll see i mean excuse me then uh rubley we can get gold involved get him some big passing yards that's a major plus i look at gold out here in the open field trying to make something happen he gets tripped he stays up and gold is in the end zone 31 yards later jared goes excuse me i just need hashtag 69 hashtag nice more yards i'm here for it two great offensive possessions a really good defensive possession to start this is what i've been waiting for to see from our team we have a major opponent who is trying to come out here and take out us and we're not letting that happen right now at least i'm hoping so keeping the pressure on him here switching a little bit of man coverage a little bit of zone across the mid you go with the run walters falls eichenberg falls everyone falls the bastion kirk with back-to-back -back tackles on this drive we're gonna play for the run here walters again charged with watching the running back little play action trying to get us to bite they throw one on a comeback route and they're gonna get that one to come be moving our coverage over to the line a little bit better kirk slides over we're setting a blitz we have no pressure no it wouldn't pick by kirk Bastion Kirk having himself a ball game jumps on accident and Kirk is going to move the ball all the way down Bastion Kirk with an interception after multiple big tackles I'm here for that a little second to seven here McConnell drops back you know the pressure he's moving around a little bit McConnell's got daylight in front of him again he's sliding and taking those yards one thing we try to preach is just for McConnell look take what's in front of you don't force anything if you don't have to just get what is there and make it yours and he's doing that today First and 10 under center now. They've been probably looking for a... Oh, no. He might have messed up here. That is luckily not picked off. McConnell already has 125 pass yards in the first quarter. You love to see that right now. This man could be on for a career high today if he keeps it up. The play action. He's got his guy, Rubley. Rubley, the big fellow, is going to try to run the guy over. He gets stopped around the five-yard line. They're relying up at quarterback now. First and goal. Dawkins is going to move over in motion. We're going to hand it off to him on a little bit of a jet sweep, and he's going to lose about a yard or so. Second and goal. McConnell's got his tight end open and Gold is going to get that one a split second later that might have been picked off. Understand? We got a touchdown yet again. This has been the performance I've been waiting for. This team has needed this. We have needed to come out here and show an opponent who says they're just as good as us and they're not. Jason Capps trying to get to the running back. He can't. The big fellow's going to bring him down though after nine or eight. Bringing a whole lot of pressure here. Oh, we have a defensive lineman guarding that fullback? Uh, okay, now we're a little bit better matched up. They immediately throw one because he felt the pressure coming. Bringing the pressure yet again. A small offensive line shouldn't be able to handle that. We get to him, but they immediately get the pass out and Kirk with a hard hit, but they still get 11. Illinois has struggled today, and they've been trying to find really a good drive to put together, and they just haven't quite found it, but we're trying to see if we can stall this one because they're starting to get a little bit too much momentum. They're running a little bit. Edwards and company are going to stop him for a loss of one on that stack. Trying to get this crowd hype. And one thing to tease you guys on, there is a rumor that we're uh, working. What the heck was that pass? Anyway, it's like we were saying, there is a rumor that uh, Cascade Valley is working on getting the funding for a brand new stadium. I don't have, you know, timelines of when it might or, you know, won't be built, but we're going to work on it and see if we can make one dumb. But a new stadium, if we keep winning and play like we are, might be happening in the future. And if we do end up making one, what did you ultimately want to see out of a new Cascade Valley Stadium? Would you want to see sort of a wall of fame or something of that nature? I'd love to hear what your feedback is, what you want to see. But right now we got to fumble and we'll pick it up. Edwards is there. Bobby Edwards, the true freshman from Hawaii. I see you. This one out the Bastion Kirk has a sprained wrist. He is going to be coming back soon, but you never want to see a dude go down when he's having a great a game like he is right now, which has been absolutely great. McConnell, though, 
Sliding after that first down smartly. We're going to send Rubley on a streak route here. Dawk is across on the side. Immediately wide open, Romelo Dawkins gets another first down. He's been on fire today. Squad is looking unbelievably good. 21 0 is not what I sort of envisioned today, but I'm honestly here for it. Rubley, the big fella with another 20 yard grab. First down and 10 again. McConnell feels a whole lot of pressure here. He's going to try to get rid of it. Robert Roth picks that one up, and he's down at the four yard line. Another big grab. These receivers, the tight ends, everybody's coming to play. First and goal. We're going with a little halfback toss here. Dawkins coming in to help out with some of the blocking on the edge. He got it, but. We didn't really get what we needed. We lost three. Three rushes for nine yards. It's been a little tough so far for Durham, but he's had still, I think, a solid game for the limited amount of carries we've given him. McConnell, they're still on the read option now. They're, they're figuring out what we're doing on the ground. Third and goal. A lot of time left here in the first half. I'm going to try to hit him with a little bit of a screen. It kind of sort of works. We get three yards, but it's fourth and goal. It's time for a rare field goal. Yes, I know we are absolutely blowing them out, but I don't want to mess things up and not capitalize on points. We need all the points we can get because we've seen our team blow leads late in the game and every point matters right now. I love it when I'm seeing offensively and defensively. We've just we've really come together to make some good points happen here. And our quarterbacks out here running. We're trying to get to him. Eichenberg is going to bring him down, but Williams picks up nine. Second is short. Playing the run. They end up not going with the run. They throw one and oh my God, we are getting torched. John Hall got absolutely smoked in that route. We're going to ultimately bring it down, but help me picks up 55 on that one. If there is one thing that John Hall cannot do, it is press cover. And every time we press cover, there's a little bit of me that worries that he's going to get torched. And he's done mostly well today, but Cumbie's just absolutely destroying him at the moment. Oh my God, the quarterback goes up the middle and he picks it up. You cannot forget about this guy. That is how they get back in this game by letting their quarterback. Just pick us apart. He's doing it through the air on the ground. Williams is that guy. And to make matters even more crazy, they're going for two. I don't blame them at all. This is important. They get this. All of a sudden, it becomes not as drastic to come back and win this game. And we get Walter with a big stop. One yard shy. We did it. That's what I wanted to see from our squad. A big time player making a big time play. We absolutely got one right there. Oh, my God. The shambles we're in. We found a wide open Clayton McFadden for another big game to 26. We almost have that goal that we needed for the first or in the entire game, but we almost did it in the first half. We 250 pass yards, and we are really about to hit that right now. McConnell feels the pressure, scrambles out of bounds. Nobody touches him, and that's what I want to see. Let's not forget, though, I believe we need a single tight end to have over a lot of yards. <laughs> a lot of yards. So we need 100. I think Rubley's probably the closest right now. Robert Roth wide open and he drops an easy one. That being said, even though Rubley is doing a really good job, we're still open to throw to Jared Gold if he can get you know us close to that mark. And right now he is blowing the doors off the coverage for another gain of 12. Gold is currently sitting at 50 yards in the afternoon. He's having a great game. We're going to put Rubley on a quick little slant route here. We're going to put McFadden on a clear out. Pressure is real. Throwing one deep. The whole time my dog is. I thought it was going to be overthrown the way that was looking, but Dawkins said, let me rise up real quick and get that for you, coach. This game has just been different. I was expecting one of those tough games where you got your claws out, you're trying, you're struggling, but we are bringing the pain right now. The young fellas, we said we wanted more sacks, and look at what the freshmen are doing on the edge. I feel like the key for us now has just been to not press cover a ton, especially John Hall, and just give that man a little bit of room to operate, and we've been so much better. We'll give him the underneath stuff. That's fine, but... Nothing over the top right now. While we say that, though, they've passed for 124 on just six completions. Cumbie has, I think, 105 of that 124. That's been the one dude that is torching us nonstop. We're watching the quarterback out of the backfield, and I think he's using that to his advantage. He's passing across the middle because we have to watch the QB to make sure he doesn't run for a big gain. Play for the pass. This dude has been killing us right now. They go for the dump down. Will Walton is right there as well as Zeichenberg, and he still gets the first. I'm feeling a lot of momentum shift their way. Like, this is not what we had in order. They find another guy open. I mean, Jordan Dame is our best corner, and he's getting torched. Kyron Cumbie has to be one of the best receivers in the nation. I mean, this dude is torching our best cover corners. Doesn't matter who we got out there. He's ready. Now they go up the middle with Reggie Shaw. He gets a two-yard touchdown run. All of a sudden, Illinois probably going for two again. They're not too far out of this game. So Illinois actually opted to go for the extra point, I guess, because they didn't want to mess up. Now they're only down 18, so technically it's not too far out of the game for them. McConnell trying to find some room here. He's going to push himself through to get seven. 
we haven't really run the football a ton i feel like that's gonna be something more for maybe the second half but i really have been enjoying how this offense has been working so far through the air we've been dominating and i'm not mad at that at all mcconnell feeling all the pressure in the world sees the tight end he's gonna find him because all those yards matter 14 of 17 276 yards four touchdowns for john mcconnell today what an absolute afternoon he's having See on the pressure and okay you know what we touted his horn a little too much we tried one we threw it a little bit in some double triple coverage and look what happens a big grab there by eddie smith or illinois and all of a sudden the momentum still stays on their side we were doing well we just got a little overzealous and look what happens to us walter's trying to fight his way through he's going to try to trip him up he can't walton is coming over to try to clean him up a little bit he's going to hit him hard he forces him out but 41 yards and they're about to score again I talked about it earlier it's just we need all the points we can get because i don't trust our defense not to blow a lead especially in the second half and well here we are in the first half about to blow our own lead here walt no standing up williams says uh-uh not today only one yard for him a little scared but again oh they're going that's a that's not the quarterback back there that's a running back we're gonna keep this one but eichenberg's ready trying our best here again we're playing for the pass williams back into qb for this play they throw out to the edge and what a stop there by jordan damon saying not in my house now, I thought they might have went for it here, but on fourth and nine, it's probably a little bit too far for them to feel comfort. So they're going to go for the points to get themselves 16, which will cut the lead to a 15 point game. The field goes up. It's good. And we got ourselves a ball game still. With where the game is right now, we're going to still try to get some points if we possibly can. But if we can't, 40 seconds in a dream left. We'll play it out as much as we can. Rudely with 14 big yards across the middle. So we have Rudely over 50. We have Jared Gold over 75 or something of that nature. We're in a pretty good spot for where our tight ends need to be yardage wise today Connell's out here scrambling a little bit looking for his own room picks up that first down smartly to bounce he does get hit late though I always cringe when he gets hit but he's gonna stand up thankfully first and 10 22 seconds left you see gold across the middle gold's gonna catch that one gold is moving and I think that's gonna put him over 100 which is huge 40 big yards on that reception 102 yards on the game we officially have that goal plus the other pass to go now we just need two interceptions and we'll be golden Man, Jared Gold is just showing out today. What a major, major play. I don't know if that tight end wants to come here after seeing what Jared Gold is doing, though. Connell, back here. Pressure's there. He's got a guy. Takes his time, throws it. Get that IRA up. Robert Roth is now going to catch the fifth touchdown pass of the game, which ties the school record. John McConnell needs one more to have that record all to his own. 37 points in the first half, only 16 given up. This has been a tough game, but we have found a way to dominate, and I'm here for that all day. With a lot of our goals knocked out, we're going to come out here and see if we can get some of the guys that really deserve these yardage and these numbers a little bit more effort. Derwin rarely touched the ball in the first half, and we want to change that some here in the second. Well, second and three here, going with a little bit of an option. Yeah, McFadden involved again. He's a dynamic playmaker. We want to get him out there. He's going to catch that one. He's a burner who is one of the fastest players on our team, and he does get the three we need for the first. First down again. Pressure is real, but yo, McConnell is just out here showing the legs and he fumbled, but thank God he's out of bounds. We gotta take it easy though. The last thing I wanna do is have McConnell get hurt in a blowout where we absolutely don't need him. I wanna make sure he leaves on his own accord, not because the defense hits him too hard. We are pretty close to putting Barr in a little bit more. We do have him in here. This is a little bit of a misdirection decoy play, but again, Derwin is just, he's struggling. Again, limited carries, but he's still struggling. I don't know if it was just that first play being a bad omen where he didn't catch that ball, but it just hasn't been a career day for him at all. Throw one down the field, and we should not gamble like that ever again. Third down, nine yards to go. Bar's going to come in as a quick replacement. Derwin's pretty gas. Go with the halfback screen, and it was looking good, and then that defender came out of nowhere. We're kicking a field goal here. Okay, we wanted to kick a field goal, but our kicker says, no, 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 no. Not today. I'm not really feeling it, so we're going for it here. Robert Roth, we're sending him deep. We got gold coming across the middle. Swain's in as well. Little misdirection pocket feels like it's collapsing mcconnell scrambling for his life he's throwing one out of bounds and now we wanted it but rather than we throw a pick we'll just turn it over so it was a fun drive but just not a great drive not really how we wanted to see that one go williams and company though they know what they got to do i'm surprised to see them run it as quickly as they are here but i mean if you get yards like that why not Eichenberg is having a really good game so far. He came into the game with about 51 total tackles. His career high with Cascade Valley is 68, I believe. So he's not too far off that mark. Well, second and nine action. We're playing for the pass. They go with the run, a QB keeper on this one. John Hall there trying to get a stop. Ray Walton cleans him up. We're gonna keep Eichenberg on a little bit of a QB spy. 
Trying into the backfield. Eichenberg and Humpy are going to beat him. And Ray Walton with another big tackle on a third down to stop him from getting to first. Now, they opted to go for a punt. They kick it deep into our own territory. So we have the ball really inside the five, which is equal part scary. And okay, now it's even more scary. Derwin is having, I think, a, a career low. Barring an injury in a game, this might be one of the lowest totals in rushing he's had in a very long time. We're not giving up on him, though. A little bit of a misdirection here. See if we can go up the middle, but they're stacking that mid a bit. Derwin's going to push through and look at him. Fight through. That's nearly as many yards as he had the entire game coming into that play. About time. Love seeing some positive gain there. We're going to send Dawkins a little bit deep because the safety play was in the box. And then, well, that happened. Second and 17. Don't want to give up a big sack like that. Oh my god, this man's wide open. We're gonna find Roth IRA and Roth is out here moving. Diversify your portfolio because Roth IRA is in the building. That is the most touchdowns we've ever thrown with a single quarterback in Cascade Valley history. John McConnell's name will be in the record books of Cascade Valley for a long time coming. But now he breaks his own record. Six total touchdowns. You'd love to see it. Two minutes left in the third, and this is an absolute blowout. Yes, they're putting up some points, but they don't stand a chance right now. Okay, neither do we. Apparently tackling because we can't do it in sevens for the third time. We're trying to get pressure on Williams, man, but he has stood tough in that pocket, delivered really good strikes, and we just haven't been able to get it to him. And these draws they're running are monstrous. First and 10 again, Illinois again, probably out of this, but they're going to try to find a way to fight back. I respect it. Damon not going to get to that one. We for the interception, completely put himself out of the building, but Bastion Kirk, though, gets another tackle, and it's, of course, Cumbie with another big gain. We're trying, but... I mean, Williams is putting on a fantastic show. 260 plus yards through the air. A lot of check downs, but a lot of big gains through the air, too. Walton and Eichenberg have been everywhere. I think they both have eight plus tackles so far today. Bastion Kirk has made some great plays as well. Some of the senior guys in the team are definitely stepping up big, and you love to see it. They're throwing one out here to the edge, and it's Hall getting torched again. John Hall will get there. I think he will. He's still young in his career here, but some of these plays are just boneheaded like he he loses himself in the back of the defense and just doesn't keep an eye on his man in the fourth quarter the super important drive illinois knows they need to get some points on the board here if they have any semblance of a comeback They're going with the read option but we sniffed that one out conley again with another big tackle you love to see what he's doing on defense today 30 to 15 dropping our guys back that should even make it the john hall can't get burned Cumbies in the far right side which is hooper kind of scared about the most he comes across the middle eichenberg though is there for his ninth tackle of the afternoon Fourth and six now. Got a lot of our guys just playing in front. They go with a run. Conley's there for his third tackle of the game, and we stop him. What, what was the play call there? What are you thinking? The fourth quarter being here, we're going to leave McConnell in for just a few more plays. This is probably his last drive of the afternoon. If he gets hit too hard, though, we're definitely going to pull him and just say, we'll see you later. We'll see you next week. Bardo has come in for Derwin, relieving him from what has been a really rough afternoon. Again, he helped himself out a little bit towards the end, but it's just, it hasn't been a Derwin type game. First down again here. Connell sees a lot of pressure. Goes for a quick dump off to Barr, who's going to slip his way through for about seven or eight yards. Got a couple guys going deep here. Second to three, though. We do have an option underneath if we need it. Who else but Roth IRA wide open for more yards. 11 on that one. That is now, I believe, the school record for pass yards in the game with 443. McConnell breaks another record on that pass to Roth, who, again, broke the touchdown record a drive or so ago. That was honestly another big reason why we wanted McConnell to have one more drive out here, just so he could try to break his own record because he's having a career-type game. I want him to have a career-type record to go with it. Second down, four yards to go. Got Jason Barr out there. Some of the best hands on the team for a running back, at least. He gets 21 fumbles, and then who else is there but Roth? Protecting his, div his, I don't know, his investment. Passing pretty heavy here because we're kind of close to that 500-yard total. Getting some of our guys those catches they've needed as well because a lot of these guys are getting the yards, but not the volume of catches we'd love them to have. And McConnell definitely won't hit the 500-yard passing mark today, but he's got an opportunity to hit seven touchdowns, which you'd love for him to hit. McFadden is going to catch another one there. Not a ton of volume for him today, but he's been effective when he's got it. First and goal. Got a guy in a close one is Trey Swain. They say he's down at the one yard line. Was close to having another touchdown grab this year. And this close to making it happen. We got to let him go for his seventh passing touchdown of the afternoon. Can he make it happen yet again? Donald feels the pressure, throws one. Roth IRA, right. get that man going. Robert Roth is killing it this year. He's having a monster year. We now have McConnell with seven touchdowns. Put him on the Heisman list right now. The 50 burger secure. After this play, our second team defense is going to come in. 
I mean, if our first team defense is getting torched like this, I don't want to know what our second team is going to have. I've been super happy with how we played. I, this game was scary early on. We had some major plays that helped us out, but it's been wild to see how much we battled back and just fought through everything. I mean, every national media headline was talking about us this week and how we lost to Purdue and how, you know, Illinois beat Purdue and how are we going to be able to battle against them? And I honestly didn't know the answer to that, but look at us. We found a way. Kai Reeves watching a little bit. The quarterback's trying to go somewhere and he ends up getting sacked again for a loss of four. We are finally getting to the quarterback today. Ben Oliver with his first sack of the game. Dropping our coverage guys back a little bit. We got all the time in the world here. 320 left. Illinois just trying to put some more points to board so they can feel respected in some way. They flow one out here and oh my God, Powers got torched. Three minutes left in the game. Williams is down here driving for Illinois. Makes a quick adjustment. Kai Reeves patrolling the middle for us right now. They go with a run. I think they're kind of forfeiting up a little bit and McCree gets a tackle. I would love to see some of these guys that don't get a ton of playing time in the game just make a big play here. That would kind of be dope. They go for the underneath round. Makai Reeves bringing the heat. Does get a tackle and saw some about an inch or so short. I believe Illinois did have an injury to the player that caught that ball and was sort of running around a little bit. So they'll sub him out. They're actually bringing Simpson back in the game. Looks like it was their running back that got hurt there. Reeves trying to bring the heat. He does. He gets a big stop in the backfield to make it fourth and four. So we're getting updated with Shaw that got hurt in that play. He's going to be out with back spasms, but they say he'll return soon. So we're going to run. See if we can get a stop here. They, again, they're keeping their starters pretty much in the game. A couple of backups here and there, but we get another big hit. We get a sack. This has been just wild how many we've had today. What a play. The big fellas came out there. Even the second units get into him. For some weird reason, our first team's still out in the game. So we're going to try to get those guys subbed out. I don't want anybody these guys getting hurt right now, except for Bar. He can stay in because he's technically a second team guy. All right, a miscommunication on our side, but we got to sort it out. Now we've got our second team in, including Damon, who again, typically plays on defense, but every once in a while, you'll see him out on offense. Jason Barg is that first down. We keep the chains moving. A couple of guys here, including Trey Swain, Rocco Green, dropping back. We're gonna let him flow one up, see if Swain can go up and get it. It's in the most Rocco Green fashion. It's an interception, his sixth of the season. No one's surprised here, literally no one. McConnell was an absolute legend today. Uh, what he did to lift up this team on his shoulders and get a W was miraculous. 488 yards through the air, 79 on the ground, seven total touchdowns, a turnover here or there, but that's my Heisman right there. That's my Heisman. John McConnell, again, we talked about a 26 to 32, seven touchdowns, one interception, one sack. Rocco Green. Enjoy the ride as a senior. Enjoy it. On the ground, McConnell led us today with 79 rush yards and touchdowns from him. We never actually have a single rushing touchdown today because we were going all on a full out blast through the air. Derwin had 36, four yards per carry, not terrible. Bar 5 or 35, got seven yards per carry. McFadden had three. Dawkins, he probably shouldn't have ran that wide receiver sweep. In the air, though, Jared Gold, six for 107. It's not every day that our tight end leads us in receiving yards like that, but he was a monster with two touchdowns as well. Robert Roth, five grabs, 122 yards, and three of his five grabs were touchdowns. Jason Barr had four for 73 and one touchdown in a crazy first touchdown of the game. Romello Dawkins, again, four for 83 with one touchdown. Rudley had 50, McFadden had 41. We got a lot of guys involved today, and I'm happy about that. Look at Tommy Eikenberg, led us in tackles, but nine is in 60 in the year. Eight shy of his record here currently uh, with the team. Again, we have people that have had more, but again, Eikenberg trying to do his best out there. Eight by Walton, Bastion Kirk had a heck of a game today. Probably our player of the game on defense. Bobby Edwards, the freshman, had two sacks. Oliver had one. This is me. Ben Oliver had one. Eli Oliver had one. And we also see Mark Mullins getting in there with one as well. Interceptions. We only had one. We needed two to get that sort of thing that we needed, but it is what it is. Bash and Kirk he played a heck of a game today, and he's my defensive player of the game. Don't get it twisted. Illinois is a very tough opponent, but I think our team finally played the way they needed to offensively and defensively. Yes, we gave up some yards, but I don't care about giving up yards. I care about giving up touchdowns and field goals and turning the ball over. And I think across the board, offensively and defensively, one of the better games we played this season in the Big Ten. We'll see what we can do. We have some more work to be done, but the polls better put some respect in our name because top 21, we're like top 15, soon to be top 10, in my opinion. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one.